expect, expect the unexpected. How is it we'll go long distances with low rider ST? I've been in Idaho 300 miles already. I haven't seen one potato. Dude, that's not lava, that's cow dung. Uh, how am I liking the back? Saddle and back, the biggest one they have. to be so cool because nobody talks about it right now the road alongside the lake I'm not sure I think it's it goes there was a dam over there that's called the Palisades Dam maybe it's Lake of Palisades and about 10 to 15 miles twisties that was so much fun This morning it's uh, 40 degrees. Waiting for Danny to refuel. His credit card is giving him trouble. So the ST, how is it to tour? How is it to do go, go long distances with a uh, low rider ST? That's very comfortable for me. Riding position is comfortable with my forward controls. Almost 3,000 miles already. I'm keeping up with the big boys with the, with the baggers. No problem whatsoever. the scenery completely flat absolutely nothing there's say burnt but yellow dried up vegetation it's a two-lane road the roads aren't patchy so it's kind of bumpy when you're crunching miles and after a few days your ass starts to really hurt so you find every possible position to move around to stretch your legs one leg this, this way the other one straight forward take a look I, I showed you a few of the positions I'm doing and additionally with this stupid cruise control that's not working I have to figure that out as use my left hand a little bit on the throttle and stretch my right hand let some blood flow back into it hey, what's up buddy come away somewhere in Idaho between here and there we left Alpine and we're on our way to Boise Boise sounds like Joyzy Joyzy boys Boise Boise Idaho a lot of land a lot of land over here they call it craters of the moon craters of the moon the rock formation the, it looks just like craters of the moon not that I've been in the moon some kind of rock formation looks out of this world I just miss you more than anything. one of the signs saying craters of the moon and it de definitely looks like it's out of this world out of this not not on earth you can see the lava formation over here look at the look this look at the lava layers oh that's so cool 
that is actually so cool. Lava rock, lava stone. Dude, that's not lava, that's cow dung. It was broken up and just dumped like a different planet. It erupted and splashed all over. Exhausting, huh? And boring. Boy, you have never ridden in these areas where it's just stretches of hundreds and hundreds of miles of straight road ahead of you. Sometimes there are fields on the sides, very few cars, very little people. You don't see people. Every once in a while, you'll see a ranch far in. Boy, I don't know how they live this kind of life. It's not for me. Obviously, it's a very isolated experience. But this uh, ride, this ride is just like getting from point A to point B. Let me tell you, it's not boring. It's actually very boring. <laughs> I've been in Idaho 300 miles already. I haven't seen one potato. Not potato patch, not potato field. Not even Frito-Lay potato chips. I don't know what's going on. Just got to Boise, Idaho. Actually rolling into high desert Harley Davidson. Yeah, apparently the Harley Davidson dealership over here is actually the biggest in uh, around four, four states surrounding. It would be really good. I called the service department, asked them if they could uh, check my bike. They said, bring it in. Let's see how that works out. Oh, this is a huge, a huge dealership. The service department uh, were very nice over here. Took a look at the bike, ran through the diagnostics, just like we did. Harley's manual says to replace. After uh, you do the reset, it doesn't help, comes back again, which I've done like three times already. It says to replace the control mod, the left hand control module. They don't have the part and Harley's back ordered till November. So I don't think I'll wait till November. <laughs> I don't think I'll keep riding. He actually gave me the part number that I need as we roll towards California on the route. Whenever we see a Harley dealership, I'll stop by and see if they have that part number. If they do, he said it's about an hour, an hour labor of, uh, you know, to replace it. It's actually replacing the module that goes right here through the handlebars all the way in the bottom and connects over here so for now no uh <laughs> no cruise control shut up shut up no cruise control suck it up 350 miles behind us 330 and we feel uh, fresh enough to push a little bit more so we're gonna head uh, further westbound ontario and that is already oregon it's, uh, ontario oregon refueling right now so tomorrow morning we get a fresh start Funny. We do everything to avoid the rain, avoid the wet. We wake up in the morning, our par our bikes are parked right near the sprinklers. The bikes are completely wet. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning, getting organized. We're leaving towards the coast today. Uh, that's the plan, 350 miles to get to Otis, Oregon. It's literally on the Pacific. Loading the bikes now, let's grab breakfast. Really outside weather and off east we're still steaming in so many 109 in our area that's what awaits us this morning we gotta escape and go towards the coast we're trying to avoid fires as well some road closure let's go come on let's go let's go Let it warm up. And once we hit the coast, I believe and I hope temperatures are gonna drop. About 350 miles today to get to Otis, relax for the day, and then continue southbound towards the Avenue of the Giants, California. Uh, how am I liking the back? Saddle and back, the biggest one they have. It's serving me great. I actually think I should have taken a smaller one just because I'm just, I, could, I see that I overpacked. I'm gonna go on a road trip, I wanna be lighter, 
smaller bag would be, you know, for one person, smaller bag would be ideal. Simply go through uh, less t-shirts and wash more. Use the washing machine at the hotels more. Because I took like a week uh, worth of clothes, a week of t-shirts, underwear, socks, long pants, stuff like that. I could definitely have dropped it to like four, four days of clothes and then just have a cycle of every four days, uh, you know, washing my clothes. But once I figured out how to, you know, properly, properly connect, the anchoring, the anchoring point over here that gave it great stabilization. Here's where I keep uh, uh, my glasses, anything accessible I need. The zipper over here opens, and I even when the bag is uh, tied down, and I can grab things out if I want. Perfect. And it serves as a great backrest. This bag is ideal for, for someone riding with a partner for two up riding to pack it back here on the sissy bar or on a rack. And then you have a luggage for two people. For one, it's only like for one up, it's just fancy people that want to dress up clothes in the evening. I literally pack too much. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. starts to fade feels like things are gonna go my way i'm gonna let the sun shine in the day i'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke and i will try to fix what has been broken and take this weight off my shoulders cause i know yesterday ain't coming back Gonna let the past stay in the cold. I will listen to the ocean, let its unsaid words be spoken, and I'll let my mind be carried by the waves. It said Arlington, Oregon. We had to stop because my, you know, I have the smallest fuel tank over here. I think a half a gallon less than them, than the touring. And it was showing, it was dropping at 36. And when we pulled in over here, 21 miles, you saw that huge lake. There's absolutely nowhere to stop. So the first place we found, we just pulled in. That bike we just yeah, saw, that bike we just saw, I just passed. Yeah, that's that's Cam. Awesome, yeah. He stopped uh, to refuel with us, and yeah. we're grabbing a, a full pie, 16-inch like pie. I make videos. Pie. Oh, and, uh, yeah. What is it called? Oh, no, Meat lovers. Like the, Meat lovers. Not, I make yeah, no 16 inches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six, oh, <laughs> 16 uh, inches. Oh, inches. Oh, a pie. A pie. Honestly, yeah. the motorcycle community in general. If you're on two wheels, typically it's good, but the Harley is special. You're you're it. Well, it's like a sliver of American culture. Yeah. Danny's having the last oh, bite yes. of that delicious pizza. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's good. All, all, any possible meat was on there except for a steak. <laughs> I'm with the, on the phone with Volcano oh, uh, Harley Davidson. But they're parts, uh, parts uh, department trying to figure out if they have if they have this this, this, is what I'm talking about. this part number for me. But, uh, maybe they're a bunch of cool dudes. Right? Followed us in, got gas, we started talking, now we're eating pizza. Nice dude. That's the thank you so much. Thank you. That was good pizza. Now Cam is taking us on a local route. He's gonna go uh, south of Mount Cook to an old volcano. He says it's actually an active volcano.
see these road trips, these adventures, you never know what to expect. You never know what you're going to get because this day started pretty much supposed to be on a Venfold riding here for uh, like 450 miles just to the coast. And then we meet up with Cam, a local. Harley guy takes us, we, we ride a little bit, feed him with a little bit of pizza. And he takes us to the scenic route. Unbelievable. Cam just told me here, right here in this parking lot, 30 feet of snow in the winter. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this view. Did you see the size of the trees? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the view, Mount Hood. It's actually an active volcano. Who would have expected that when we woke up and left uh, the hotel this morning? That's the fun part of this road trip. Expe expect the unexpected. Amazing. I honestly Amazing I feel like I'm a Mount Hood liaison, honestly. <laughs> I've shown so many people this mountain. It's like, like I said, it's the only place in North America you can snowboard 300 days a year. Wow. And um, I've grown up here since I was a kid. So. You can't. You don't really snowboard that mountain. Oh, I snowboard the whole thing. Yeah. Gas and cherries. Don't be fooled. They look yellow, but they're very sweet. <laughs> 